<laughs> I thought this was supposed to be informal. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I, uh, I'm a professor of human evolutionary biology on the other side of the river, as I said. Um, um, Upstream, not downstream. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I studied uh, the evolution of the human body. And many years ago, um, I uh, got involved. Uh, I'm actually originally a head guy, right? So I study the biology and evolution of the head. But many years ago, I got interested in uh, how we hold our head still when we run. Because uh, most animals, when they run, who, who are good at running, they actually hold their head like a missile, right? It's, and the body moves on the head. Uh, but if you watch animals that aren't very good at running, their head flops all over the place, right? And we lack the mechanisms that good running animals have to stabilize their heads, but we actually are pretty good at keeping our heads still, even though the human body is like the pogo stick, bouncing up and down. So I got interested in how humans got good at that, and, we re and I realized that there are special adaptations in the human body that stabilize the head during running, and only makes sense during running, and as a result, I got interested in the, the idea that humans evolved to run, in fact, to run long distances. So. Uh, in 2004, a colleague of mine, Dennis Bramble, who was at the University of Utah, and I published a paper entitled Born to Run, and that was on the cover of Nature, and uh, my life has changed ever since, because, uh, including this, uh, this really weird guy who came up to visit me uh, a year afterwards, who, uh, who was, came to my lab and he was interested in, he was going to be right, going down to Mexico to write a book on some kind of porn star in Mexico. <laughs> and before I knew it, he got excited about barefoot running, and well, you, many of you have, may have probably read the book, so he also helped change my life. The only way you can land on your heel is if you have huge amounts of cushioning, several two to three centimeters of EVA elastic, right, which then slows that rate of loading so that it feels comfortable. But you're still crashing into the ground, you just can't feel it anymore. The shoe is making it tolerable, but you're still crashing into the ground. You can't do that when you're barefoot. So there are a lot of people who are wearing normal, you know, normal, modern running shoes that aren't getting injured. Fine, that's good. But there are a lot of people, maybe a majority of people who are wearing those shoes who are getting injured on a regular basis. That's not good. And a lot of those people are doing it because they're overstriding and they're running in a poor way. So <clears throat> all, what does all this mean for about minimal shoes and barefoot running? Well, it means that we can learn from barefoot running and from people who don't wear shoes what's the natural way in which the human body evolved to run. And we can learn a lot about the biomechanics and physics of running form and help use that to think about injury. So what I believe is that, you know, A, a natural form of running is probably better for you than an unnatural form of running. And that no shoe engineer ever in the history of the human race has ever been able to design a shoe as well as natural selection, right? Your, your foot is a better engineered shoe than any shoe manufacturer will ever be able to, to make. All you need for the foot, if you want to, shoes are great, I'm, I'm wearing shoes right now, right? But all you need to protect your foot is just something to protect your foot, right? You just need a little, you need a little bit of uh, something to protect you from glass or, you know, needles or acorns or whatever the hell you're worried about. Um, that's all you need. You don't need cushioning. You don't need motion control. You don't need any of that other kind of stuff. But that said, shoes still play a role because um, there are a lot of people who like read Born to Run and they think, oh my gosh, I'll just take off my shoes and all of a sudden I'll be like Chris McDougall. You know, I'll be a best-selling <laughs> author. Um, you know, I'll marry this Hawaiian goddess and um, you know my teeth will be white and clean and you know everybody will want to like go out with me. Whatever. <laughs> They have this idea that suddenly they'll be injury free, right? And that's not true either. And a lot of people are, are, are switching to minimal shoe running, and they're getting injured too, because they're also not running properly as well. And if a running shoe does do some things, when I mean, there's a lot of work put into a running shoe, my, my, my feeling is that if you're going to run badly, you, you should wear a shoe. <laughs> if you're going to run badly and wear a minimal shoe, you're probably worse off. So what this is really again, like, is you want to have, you don't want to have forces acting around your joints. They're torques, right? A torque is a is a rotational force, and rotational forces that act around joints move our joints, but they also cause our muscles to have to react to those movements as well. And really high move movements that don't help move us forward actually can cause injury. So a good run involves no impact and low rotational forces in your joints, low torques, right? So how do you do that? Well, the first is. 
not to overstride. That's the biggest rule in running. Overstriding is bad. Even bad coaches know that you shouldn't overstride. And overstride is defined as when your ankle lands in front of your knee. Right? That necessarily stiffens your knee, and it stiffens your ankle, and it means that you're going to have a high impact peak. When you hear somebody running and they're like thumping, right? We've all heard thumpers, right? I hope nobody in this room is a thumper, because if you are a thumper, you're very, very injury prone, right? Thumpers overstride horribly, right? So the way not to overstride is to do several things. The first is, don't lean. You know, a lot of runners lean badly, right? I used to be a bad leaner too, right? If you lean at your hips, you're placing your center of your mass of your trunk in front of your hips, which means that you're, you're and you're, remember your moment of inertia, right? You have a high moment of inertia of your upper body. That means that every time you hit the ground, your trunk wants to pitch forward and you want to land on your nose. So you have, to, you have two things you can do. Either is you can use all those hamstrings and glutes to kind of keep you from falling over. That's, that's expended energy you don't need, and that actually is going to stress, stress your posterior muscle compartment. That's not good. Or the other thing you can do is to stabilize yourself is stick your leg out. Right? So leaners overstride. The second thing is, um, is a high cadence. Right? Too many people run at a pathetically slow cadence. Right? They run at like 150 steps a minute. A lot of people, that's their preferred stride frequency, but when you measure them running, that's not their optimal stride frequency in terms of economy. Most people's optimal stride frequency is about 170 to 190. It's much faster, you know? One, two, three, one, two, three, much faster. So you see these plotters out there, right? They're leaning. They're, they're, they're running at an overly slow stride, so they're sticking their leg out, right? Um, and, um, and then, as a result, they have to heel strike. And when you heel strike and you overstride, you run into troubles, right? So good, good, good minimal, minimal shoe, barefoot runners, nice vertical posture, and they keep a nice high rate of cadence, which, by the way, is optimal. You actually spend less energy, all of you, independent of your body mass or your leg length when you run at a higher frequency. And as a result, you land like that. When you land like that, that impact peak that occurs with a heel strike disappears. It doesn't exist. It doesn't even happen. We can't measure it on the most sensitive equipment in the world, <clears throat> right? So when you worry about running on pavement, I mean, how many people are like, I don't want to run on pavement because it's hard, right? That's the most common thing I get here, or when you leave these nonsense comments after articles in the newspaper, and you don't have any you know, just you know, the people who just seem to spend their lives <laughs> adding to the thread of these things, right? But yeah, but you know, Professor Lewin doesn't understand you can't run on pavement. Well, they haven't read the, they haven't, past high school physics, right? Because the whole point is, if there is no impact, it doesn't matter how hard the surface is. Barefoot runners couldn't care less how hard the surface is. All they care about is how smooth it is, right? The best place to run <coughs> barefoot is a nice, smooth, paved road. It's like running on ice cream. It doesn't hurt in the slightest, right? It's roughness. That's what gets you. But hardness is completely, totally, 100% irrelevant because there's no collision, right? So. <coughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so the point is... You actually derailed me crashed. I'm sorry? I crashed? The yeah. train of thought derailed me crashed. Yes. So the point is that um, uh, if you want to try this, um, you know, if you want to try running, running, whether you're wearing shoes or minimal shoes, you know, I think these are good uh, techniques to learn. Um, but if you're, going to, if you're going to run barefoot, it's even more important to learn them than if you're running uh, in a in a in a in a, um, in a high heeled shoe because the high heeled shoe at least has some cushioning and protection and there are people who can run and they do run in high heeled shoes and they don't get injured and that's fine and if you're doing that you're probably actually running already in a way that's you know preventing you from getting injured so don't you know if it ain't broke you don't need to fix it but if you are suffering from injuries or if you're curious and you want to try it you know I think everybody can benefit from improving their running form and and I think going barefoot. And I, when I say barefoot, I mean barefoot. You know, take not even like five, five fingers are not barefoot, right? It's still a shoe. Take your shoes off and try running for a little bit. All that sensory nerves, all that input from the base of your foot is going to is going to uh, give you information about how your body's running. Um, so, um, but but finally, if you've been running heel striking for most of your life and you want to switch running, you can't do it like today. You have to slowly change because you have to adapt your body to all those new stresses and forces. First of all, you need very strong calf muscles. The reason a lot of people like to heel strike is it's easy, right? You don't have to have, when you land a forefoot strike, you need to have a lot of calf muscle strength to bring the ankle down, right? 
So if you don't have strong calf muscles and you go out and forfeit strike today for more than even a quarter of a mile or a half mile, you will have calves that will be screaming like you know bloody murder, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you'll, 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 you'll have doms, right, in your calves, and you'll feel miserable and unhappy, right? Um, or if you're, you know, if you do too much, you'll get tendonitis in your Achilles, um, or you'll get a stress fracture in your foot or whatever. You don't want to do that. If you do transition or try this, it is absolutely essential that you allow your body to adjust and graduate and, grab and do it, you know, slowly, 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 or I promise you, you will get injured just like any other runner, right? Secondly, um, if you're going to do this, again, do it properly. And a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to barefoot run and all I have to do is, is just forefoot strike, right? That's not true. If you forefoot strike but still run with a slow cadence and overstride, which you can do, you can, I can forefoot strike and overstride, right? I can still do it. <clears throat> but when I do that, I actually put, I have to still have to stiffen my leg. I just stiffen in a different way. That impact peak is gone, but you still have a very high rate of loading. And you also put a lot of torque around your ankle. And those are the folks who get Achilles tendonitis, bad, or Achilles tendinopathies of some sort. And also they get a lot of stress in the top of the foot, right? Um, and they get potentially even metatarsal stress fractures, which are also common among shod runners as well, right, in heel strikers. So <clears throat> if you're going to do it, please do it properly, right? Learn not to lean, high cadence, make sure you run in alignment, um, and transition gradually. And I think everybody can benefit and learn from <coughs> barefoot running and from minimal shoes. Um, again, the bottom line is what's really most important is how you run, not, not what's on your feet. But I do believe that what's on your feet does affect how you run. And hopefully we can, this revolution which is beginning, uh, will continue to, to go forward. Because right now, you know, what, the way in which the, and we're in a shoe store right now, but the way in which the world works is that nothing changes unless somebody can make some money, usually. Right? <coughs> and frankly, there's very little money to be made by teaching people proper running form. But, so I think it's the runners that have to take control of this movement now. Um, hopefully with, you know, benign or good, you know, shoe companies and shoe stores who actually care about this as well and, and get the message out there that, you know, how you run matters. Most track coaches, most, most shoe companies, whatever, don't teach people how to run. But, you know, you need to learn how to, how to swim, you need to learn how to play, you know, all kinds of stuff. Running actually is also a skill and if you've been wearing shoes your whole life, most of us don't know how to run either. So, um, so I think that's, the, that's really the point of barefoot minimalist running. Learning good running fun. I'll shut up. Sorry. <laughs> Answer any questions, too. I guess it wasn't slow enough. And so now we're kind of scared but want to go back to that. Well, maybe it's because you weren't, it wasn't because of how slow you went. Maybe because you weren't running properly. Were you still overstriding with a slow cadence? I see a lot of people on five fingers and they're, and they're not running properly, right? Yeah. You, you can run, you know, you can still four foot strike. You learn that very quickly when you were five fingers. It hurts to do that. So what people do is they run exactly the same way, and all they do is they just do that. That's it. All they do, right? And and that creates a lot of stress, particularly the ankles. So let me bet you got Achilles tendonitis, right? Maybe pain in the top of the foot. Plantar fasciitis. That's another common thing because you have weak feet, right? So most people that wear running shoes they have arch supports in their shoe and stiff soles. So you have the other thing to remember is you have pathetically weak feet, all of you probably. Well, not the ones that you're wearing minimal shoes, but, but most people have very weak feet, so as soon as you start switching to a new running form, all those muscles now suddenly have to work when they didn't work before, and what you get, you get plantar fasciitis. The way to work through plantar fasciitis is to strengthen your foot. That's, Continue walking. Yeah. Continue walking in them, do foot strengthening exercises, transition, you know, you know, and also run in a way that puts less torque around that foot, so it'll make it easier for you. But that's a common, I think, injury in people who transition because they are, they have weak feet. So when you strengthen your feet, it'll completely go away. Can I just ask one last question? I'm not in charge. Yes, what's the best way to find out, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to, to know as a runner whether or not you're having good running. Uh, what's the best way to find out that you're not getting better at it? Get a friend with a, a video camera else to video in lateral okay. view, right? In lateral view on a treadmill, actually, is a great way of doing it because you're just not moving, <laughs> right? And then you can just play it back and look at yourself. The other thing is that treadmills are great. I don't like running on treadmills, but treadmills are sounding boards. When you're running on a treadmill, any impact is amplified, right? If you're heel striking a treadmill, you know it. As soon as you switch to a forefoot strike, you know it too. Okay.
again, it's not all about forfeit striking. It's not the only ingredient there. Um, but treadmills are really good for that. 